we will now develop a general algebraic criterion for the columns of a 2 by 2 matrix to be linearly dependent. And the algebraic expression that we'll come up with will be the determinant. So when we see a 2 by 2 matrix with specific numbers, we pretty much know right away whether its columns are linearly dependent or not. For example, the columns of this matrix are linearly dependent. How do we notice that? Well, we observe that the second column is proportional to the first. Why? Because 9 over 3 equals 21 over 7. Each one of those ratios equals 3. So the second column is 3 times the first. And therefore, the columns are linearly dependent. Some people like to approach this question a little bit differently. They like looking for proportions within each column. And they would notice that 3 over 7 equals 9 over 21, because in 9 over 21 we can cancel a factor of 3, leaving us with 3 over 7. And so the ratios match, and the second approach also rightfully concludes that the columns are linearly dependent. So all we need to do now is carry over these approaches to this generic matrix. According to the first approach, we'll say that the columns of this matrix are linearly dependent if B over A equals D over C. According to the second approach, we'll say that the columns of this matrix are linearly dependent if A over C equals B over D. And so now we have not one, but two pretty good algebraic criteria. If we test this matrix against either one of these criteria, we'll conclude that its columns are linearly dependent. In the first case, we'll have 9 over 3 equals 21 over 7, a match, therefore the columns are linearly dependent. In the second case, we'll have 3 over 7 equals 9 over 21, once again a match, once again the same conclusion. But both of these criteria have one small problem. They fail if there is a zero in an inconvenient place in the matrix. Consider this matrix, for example. Its columns are linearly dependent because the second column is 8 fifth times the first column. Yet, while this criterion works because 0 over 5 equals 0 over 8, the first criterion fails because it involves dividing 0 by 0, which is an invalid operation. So, this criterion does not apply to this matrix. If you consider this matrix, its columns are linearly dependent because the first column is 0 times the second column. Yet, both of these criteria will not apply because they will involve division by 0. In this case, we'll have 3 over 0 compared to 7 over 0. And in this case, we'll have 0 over 0 being compared to 3 over 7. So as far as this matrix is concerned, neither criterion applies. And no matter how you manipulate these fractions, as long as you keep ratios around, you will always be able to come up with a matrix with zeros in it, for instance, the zero matrix, where the criterion will fail. So these criteria are not as general as we would like them to be because of these zeros. Or as a mathematician would say, these criteria are not quite as robust as we want them to be. Robustness refers to applicability to as many cases as possible. And so if we want to make these criteria more robust, we have to avoid divisions. Because as long as we have divisions, we'll have an issue with dividing by zero. Fortunately, there is a way to compare proportions that doesn't involve any divisions, only multiplications. For example, B is proportional to A as D is proportional to C, only if AD equals BC. Let's write that down. If we apply the same way of thinking to the second criterion, we'll actually come up with the same equality because we'll have A times D equals, once again, B times C. So both of these criteria involving ratios are equivalent to this criterion, which doesn't have any ratios at all. 
yet it applies just as well. So it only has advantages and doesn't have any disadvantages that I'm aware of. Let's apply this criterion to each one of these matrices. In the case of the first matrix, we have 3 times 21, 63, equals 7 times 9, or 9 times 7, once again, 63. In the case of this matrix, we have 0 times 8 equals 0 times 5. 0 equals 0. It works. In the case of the last matrix, we once again have 0 times 7 equals 3 times 0. We get zeros in both cases. And so this criterion tells us that the columns of each one of these three matrices are linearly dependent and it doesn't have any issues whatsoever with division by 0. In fact, this is so robust that it is from this that the determinant is inspired. Of course, what we'd want to do is combine all of the terms on one side so that we have a characterization of, of the matrix, all of those terms together. So we would rewrite this criterion as AD minus BC equals zero. Clearly, this is equivalent to this, but it has the advantage that all of the meaningful terms are together. And it is, in fact, this expression that's called the determinant of this matrix. Let's write that down. Let's give this matrix a name and call it A. And then we can write that the determinant of A, denoted by the vertical bars, is indeed equal to AD minus BC. And this definition is so important that it deserves to be boxed. And there you go. We have just succeeded in developing the expression for the 2 by 2 determinant. And now we're ready to move on to the 3 by 3 determinant and beyond.